I think it is time for Andrew and I to take some questions yes. ourselves. So, so make sure our you're using your here. hashtag. Yes. <laughs> John, do you have any questions for us? Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, this question comes from Twitter. It's from uh, Javier Mendonca. This person is from Stockholm, Sweden, and the mm. question is, if you want to achieve a native look and feel on iOS and Android, how do I do that in a good way without putting if-else statements all across my app, for example? Uh, Interesting. That's I'm a so really glad good somebody question. asked about this. <laughs> well, of course, there are a lot of things that automatically are taken care of for you when you are working mm -hmm. across multiple platforms, such as with iOS and Android, you'll see scroll behavior and list views mm -hmm. that are what you would expect. Like in iOS, you'll get an overscroll. In Android, you'll get a nice glow. But there are some cases where you're going to want to make decisions for yourself, mm -hmm. uh, how it's going to look on different platforms, which you talked about a little <laughs> bit in I.O., didn't you? Yes, yes. I, I, we had a, a talk on iOS development at I.O. this, this year. Mm -hmm. uh, and I sort of tried to squeeze in a little bit about this at the end, and I wish I'd had more time. Um, I think um, if then, which was the if then statement, which is mm -hmm. sort of the, the crux of this whole thing, right? Like, if you want different behavior on different platforms, right? somebody somewhere has to write an if statement, <laughs> right? Or a switch statement or something like that. Um, and so the question is, where does that if then live? You know, where does that statement live, right? And so in the cases that Kate was just mentioning, mm -hmm. right? Um, the SDK for some things can write that if statement for you, right? If, if uh, the list scrolling physics, right? Everybody on iOS more than likely is going to want to have the bounce more than likely. Mm -hmm. Everybody on Android, they're going to want the material glow that everybody's familiar with. That's 99% that's of your devs. And so that if then is baked right into the Flutter SDK. But there are so many other ways that you can adapt to the platform and different apps are going to want to make different decisions. So one of the ways that we've seen people have success is to make a widget whenever you have one of those decision points to encapsulate the decision that you make as a developer. So for example, if you wanted um, different navigation on iOS versus Android, right? So you wanted a material drawer mm -hmm. on Android, but for iOS, you wanted like a bottom navigation bar with separate navigation stacks for each one. You can make a widget that checks the platform and then builds one thing on one platform and the other on the other, and then they both turn around and build the same content to go into those navigation panes, you know? It really kind of encapsulates it and uh, keeps it clean that way. <laughs> yes, encapsulate is a, mm -hmm. is a great way to put it. So you have the, you know, widget should be single purpose, should handle its one little job, and a good job for a widget is to encapsulate that kind of decision. So you can build it once, you know, in one widget, and then use that widget all over the place. You don't have a bunch of if-thens scattered everywhere. So thank you, Javier, for asking that question. <laughs> um, it's a topic near and dear to my heart. Uh, I think we have time for one more, maybe a short question, John. Yeah, so this question comes from Ethiopia. The Ooh. person is Nabil Mohamed Ama. And the question is, what's the status of 3D game development in Flutter? Sure. 3D what? gaming. Yeah, yeah. Salam Ethiopia, by the way. Please tweet injera recipes. My wife would love that. Um, <laughs> I would too. <laughs> she wishes I could cook it for her. Um, but yeah, let's. We have a little bit of time. Let me. Um, so the, the you know the Flutter team is mostly focused on the app experience. You know, building the 2D UIs that people use for applications. But the Flutter team is only one group of people building things for Flutter, right? Well, There's a whole bunch of people out there in the community. Uh, I like to think of everyone as part of the Flutter team. It's That's an true. open source you know, mm -hmm. project. Everyone who's a part of the Flutter community is part of the Flutter team. And I've actually seen a number of really cool plugins that mm -hmm. are playing with you know, 3D widgets. Uh, is it possible to yeah, let's, look let's one up? Yeah, let's go into the, what was it? It was Flutter and Unity, I saw somebody. Mm -hmm. Let me just Google Flutter Unity package. Uh, yep. So let's, right here on the laptop, we have somebody who's made a package for combining Flutter with Unity. I remember seeing like a spinning cube or something like that mm -hmm. that somebody had and yeah. written out. <laughs> There's also a couple more. Um, Flame is a 2D engine that somebody wrote on mm -hmm. Flutter and things like that. So, you know, again, it's Flutter is a community project. It has hundreds upon hundreds of contributors, thousands when you get out to the ecosystem, and they're all doing great stuff. So um, even though it's not something that people in Mountain View are working on right now, there are very talented engineers building out things like that right now as well.